Welcome again. Right now we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 9. Unity and maturity. Paul writes, Brothers, I couldn't speak to you as spiritual, but as to fleshly, as to babies in Christ. I fed you with milk, not with meat, for you weren't yet ready. Indeed, you aren't ready even now, for you are still fleshly. For insofar as there is jealousy, strife, and factions among you, aren't you fleshly, and don't you walk in the ways of men? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, aren't you fleshly? Who then is Apollos, and who is Paul, but servants through whom you believed, and each as the Lord gave to him? I planted, Apollos watered. See, what is Paul talking about here saying he planted and Apollos watered? You see, Paul was the first one to come in with the gospel. He's the first one to plant the seeds of the gospel in this area. And later on, Apollos came and Apollos watered, meaning he just kept nourishing and watering the plant that Paul already planted. But God gave the increase. So then, neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. What profit is there if you plant and you water it and there's no increase? So then the only thing that matters is the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are the same, but each will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's farming, God's building. And Paul says here that he who plants and he who waters are the same. He's talking about how you're on the same level. In other words, if you plant and if someone else waters and God doesn't give increase, then it doesn't matter. I mean, whether you plant or water, it doesn't matter. You're on the same level. And finally, Paul rebukes them for their division, okay? Factions, if there's factions among you, strife and jealousy among you. So a lot of people would say, see, I mean, we got to be all in unity. You know, it's all about unity, okay? It's all about being united. Well, you know what? Let's not go too far because the same author of the same book that we're reading, skip on a few chapters to chapter 11. Paul talks about division again, and he talks about it in a different light. He says, you know, the divisions can be good, okay? It's good to have the evil divided from the good. It's good to have the light divided from the darkness. You can't just have everything all united. It's good, in a sense, to have division. So let's keep this in context, okay? What it all comes down to is this. Why are you dividing? I mean, is it because you're having a dispute, some stupid little argument like, did Pilate use soap to wash his hands or did Noah use nails to build the ark? I mean, stupid things. And you would be surprised at what some churches split over. And some of them are very ridiculous things. And yes, it is fleshly. So you got to have a little bit of discernment here, okay? When is it good to divide? When is it not good? Remember, even Jesus himself said, I come to bring a sword to divide, okay? So you need wisdom, and you will get wisdom if you seek God with all your heart. You will find him. Call upon him, and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.